Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Yon. And I'm Liao. Thank you for joining us on the second session of our Sarcopenia Awareness Virtual Live Talk. If you missed our first session last week that introduced about Sarcopenia, you may watch the recording video on our Facebook page of Hospital Lamoyi. And today, we will be talking about how nutrition can help to prevent and even reverse sarcopenia in order to maintain our health and, and improve the quality of life. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any question along the talk, please type in the comment section below and we will answer your question in the end of the talk. Now, before we talk in details about nutrition, Amy, can you help to recap a little about sarcopenia? Sure, Yon. So, sarcopenia basically means the loss of muscle mass, strength, and or performance as a part of our aging process. So, did you know that muscle loss actually starts as early as the age of 30 years old and it progresses with age? So, sarcopenia is a very common issue among elderly. I see. I totally agree with you, Amy. So now, without any delay, let us start from introducing the four most important nutrients our muscle needs to preserve their function. Amy, could you give us a head start? Sure. So first and foremost, so when we talk about muscle, we can't get away from talking about protein. So normal adult would need around 0 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per kg of their body weight. But for elderly, they will need more, which is around 1 to 1.2 grams of protein per kg of their body weight. So let's take an example. So a 50, uh, a 50 kilo elderly will need around 50 grams to 60 grams of protein a day to actually meet their requirements and preserve their muscle health. And if we divide that into the three main meals, it will be around 15 to 20 grams of protein per day in order to preserve their muscle mass. Of course, if you are heavier, you will need more protein to meet your requirements. One caution though, for people with renal diseases uh, and not going on dialysis, actually your protein needs would be very much different and very uh, much lower. 
So do find a cons uh, do consult with a dietitian to find out your protein needs. I see. However, I Amy, mean, all these numbers sounds very complicated. Can you give us a few examples on what are the protein foods and uh, their protein content? Sure, Yon. So here are some common protein sources we can find in Malaysia. So the easiest one would be our eggs. So one large egg would have around 6 grams of protein. And chicken, our Malaysian favorite. So half a chicken breast would have already uh, 27 grams of protein. And one chicken thigh, which is around uh, your palm size, would have around 17 grams of protein. So if you like fish, uh, a medium fish, like the size of one ikan kembo or one ikan sela, would have around 14 grams of protein. And dairy sources are also good protein sources. So one cup of milk or one cup of yogurt would have around 8 to 10 grams of protein, depending on their type and brands. So for example, uh, full cream milk and skim milk, they have different protein content. So to find out more about uh, the actual content, please check the nutrition label uh, behind the packaging and choose the one which is best suited for you and your family. And for vegetarian or vegan, fret not, there are also a lot of um, vegetarian protein which is commonly available. For example, red beans or green beans, uh, chickpeas, dal like in dal curries, big beans and also soy products like tofu, tempeh, tong kwa, soy milk and also seeds and nuts. So actually protein sources are commonly available. So should we move on? Yeah, I see that it's actually not difficult to get all this protein from our usual market. Mm, one question though, Amy. How about those elderly who have poor appetite and they cannot manage to eat that much? How can they get their protein? Uh, how can they achieve their protein requirements? Good question, Yon. Now, uh, there's actually something we call oral nutrition supplements. So they come in the form of milk powders, which we can commonly find in pharmacies supermarkets or even online stores so they actually um they are complete nutrition high in protein and various other nutrients which are vital for uh, elderly health so they are helpful um, comrades of elderly to meet their nutritional needs so they can actually be taken uh, as itself like milk or they can be added to cooked foods like oatmeal, porridge, smoothies, and even into baked goods to enhance nutrition in elderly with poor appetite. Great, Amy. You have given very good example of proteins and the alternative. Now, let me introduce the other three important nutrients our muscle needs to preserve their function. And these three important nutrients are vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acids, and antioxidant. Vitamin D is needed to increase our muscle mass and muscle strength. However, studies have shown that vitamin D deficiencies is very common among elderly. I see. I think this could be a consequence of poor appetite and oral intake yes. or imbalanced diet among elderly, especially yes. if they are homebound. Yeah. So do you have any um, examples of what, where vitamin D comes from? Sure. We can actually get vitamin D from fatty fish such as salmon, sardine, tuna, or mackerel. We can also get it from vitamin D fortified milk, dried mushroom, or egg yolk. And we can actually get it free and abundantly by just exposure to the sunlight. However, due to pandemic of COVID-19 now, please make sure that you are following the SOP when getting out for sunlight. Mm -hmm. Amy, do you know 
If we eat fatty fish, we can actually get three important nutrients because fatty fish is not only a source of protein and vitamin D, it's also rich in omega-3 fatty acids, which is another very important nutrient to preserve our muscle. I see. But how about those who doesn't like fish or who are actually allergic to seafood or those who are vegan or vegetarian? How can they get omega-3 from natural sources without depending on supplements? Okay, you see, omega-3 fatty acids not only rich in fatty fish, but it can also be found in omega-3 enriched eggs, flaxseed, chia seed, walnut, and avocado. So, this, they are definitely a very good choices for vegan or vegetarian. That's great. Okay, so now um, there are another very important nutrients to preserve our muscle that is antioxidant. We can easily get antioxidant from colorful vegetables and fruits. The daily requirement is by eating at least three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruits. So one serving of vegetables is about one palm size, one palm size or half cup of cooked vegetables, while one serving of fruits is about one fist size. So make sure that you are eating a few cups of vegetables and fruits of different color every day. Thank you, Yon, for sharing all the other important nutrients. Now that we have discussed about the four major nutrients for our muscle health, which is protein, vitamin D, omega-3, and antioxidant. But Yon, is there any easy way to add all together into a plate or into a meal, food we actually eat rather than just talking about the nutrients? Well, we actually can be easily obtain all these important nutrients by practicing healthy eating with the concept of suku suku separo, which is a Malaysian healthy plate method. So now we look at the plate here. In the concept of suku suku separo, quarter of the plate will be filled with carbohydrate such as rice, noodles, bread, or other grain products, and and they are the main source of energy. The other quarter will be filled with protein such as fish, chicken, legumes, eggs, and meat, like any you have shared with us just now. Of course, we can choose to eat more fishes um, because they are also a good source of vitamin D and omega-3 fatty acids. The other half of the plate will be filled with vegetables, colorful vegetables and fruits, and they are definitely for the antioxidant. I so, see. Yeah, so in a nutshell, uh, by eating a balanced diet with adequate energy intake is the key to prevent muscle loss and age healthily. Thank you, Yon, for sharing. Now that I see Suku Suku Sapiro seems like an easy concept to practice healthy eating and uh, balanced diet in order to achieve all the nutrients we have discussed about. However, I think the food trend is now uh, changing or shifting from home cooking to more on deliveries and takeaways. So how can we actually ensure we get enough protein from all the outside foods? Hmm. So let me share with you some ideas uh, or some food options I feel which are better choices you can find outside. Sure. So the first one, the easiest one would be our economy rice. So it's the easiest way you can practice the kusuka separo discussed by Yong just now. So make sure you have at least one protein source. It can be your fish, eggs or legumes, and also vegetables for your antioxidant intake. Hmm. So our typical Malaysian breakfast, our toast with half boiled eggs, they're actually a very good source of omega-3, vitamin D and protein. So one tip to boost your protein intake is to switch your kaya and butter into maybe something like natural peanut butter or almond butter. 
So fish or chicken congee and soup noodles are great options for elderly with poor appetite or poor denture uh, to actually meet their protein, omega-3 and vitamin uh, D intake. And for vegetarian or for Indian population, idli or putu with chutney, dal and lentil curries are great protein pack option as well. I see Amy. Mm, how about snacks? I believe many Malaysians like to have their tea time with some small snacks in between meals. Do you have any suggestion for that? Of course. So for snacks, the first one I would recommend is actually our Malaysian delight tofu pa or soybean curd. So they are actually good source of protein, uh, vegetarian protein. But do make sure you just use a moderate amount of the sugar syrup, especially if you have diabetes. Mm. So just don't just pour the whole packet in, but control the amount of sugar syrup you actually use for yeah. a healthier version. Others, I would recommend maybe red bean or green bean soup. They are rich protein sources, as well as fiber sources. And they also have quite high in antioxidant as well. But beware when you buy from outside vendors because they can be quite high in sugar and sometimes which is not really healthy. Or even better, cook it yourself. So omitting the santan, using less sugar to make it a very healthy snack option. Another one I would recommend would be popia. It's full of vegetables, which are source of antioxidant discussed by Yon. And even better, make sure they have at least one protein source, maybe some eggs or shrimps inside mm. to increase the protein content. And lastly would be our famous tidbit, steamed chickpeas or kacang kuda. So actually one handful of kacang kuda would have around 9 grams of protein already. So it makes a really good uh, protein tidbit for you to enjoy. But look out for additional salt because it can be detrimental to your health if too much. Hmm, those sounds like some great snacks ideas. Um, now, we have idea about takeout food and also eating out. How about those homebound elderly who usually stay at home and have their meals at home? Good question. So there are actually some ways elderly can actually modify their home diet. So the first thing I would discuss is eggs. So eggs are easy ways to stick in extra protein to your home diet because they are widely available, cheap and easy to prepare. So for example, to make a nourishing breakfast, maybe we could add um, something like milk, cream, cheese or even tuna flakes into our eggs to make it into a delicious omelette. Mm. So the second is to make use of milk powders or our own nutrition supplements, which I have discussed just now. So as I said, they can be added into coffee or tea or any drinks, and also to cook foods like oatmeal, smoothies or congee, and for extra nutrition and extra boost of protein. Lastly, is to just simply switch things up. So maybe instead of white bread, maybe you could opt for wholemeal bread or bread with seeds or grains for extra protein and omega-3. From our common spread, kaya and butter, into natural, unsweetened and unsalted peanut butter or any nut butters because they are much higher in protein. Also, from our local snacks like poi mues or curry puff, into maybe something like red bean soup, uh, cream crackers, our Malaysian favorite, topped with tuna or cheese, or just pair up with milk or orange nutrition supplement, especially for elderly with poor appetite. Thank you very much, Amy, for your sharing with us with those such good ideas. Well, ladies and gentlemen, with little modification and be more smart when choosing takeout foods, we can still able to eat 
very delicious Malaysian foods and delicacies. So, with tons of examples we have shared with you, I'm sure that you already have idea what to eat for your evening tea and also your dinner tonight. With that, we have come to an end of today's session. Stay tuned for our upcoming Facebook Live Talk on next Wednesday. Our official therapist, Mr. Shatis, will share with you some strengthening exercises that can help elderly to prevent sarcopenia. Thanks again for joining us today and we are happy to take questions. And you may type your question in the comment section below. Thank you very much. So if there are no questions for us, we are happy to end the session for today.